Section C starts off with a press on the sixth string. This is a single X written in the score, and that means that it's a yoaoshi or a half press. So it's like a sharp. So try playing. First, let's check it. Play the six on its own without the press. Now, get an idea for what that sounds like. You might check it with the four, five, six is do, de, mi. Okay. Once you have an idea what that sounds like, you can start. This starts with a, a melody with the in the first codal part. So it starts with and a C. I like to think of this as kind of bouncing down. This section, this part is use the squee as kind of a jumping off point to come down to the three. Measure three starts on eight. You want to keep the six held down because that's still ringing. And we need it in the next measure. It's still pressed, so we're just going to keep it held down. Again, bouncing off the eight down to the five. Next line, I'd like you to think about using your middle finger and then connecting to your thumb up here. So. It's good to think of your having your thumb in position to play that so that you don't have to totally change your position. Have it in kind of position so that you can play it smoothly, then the sha sha 10 on 6, 7, and 11. Second finger, third finger, also have your thumb kind of here ready to play that upper note. Then, same kind of pattern, but on five and 10, between five and 10. So think of the lowest note and the upper note and how they fit in together. And uh, five, six, 10, and five, six, 10. With Shasha 10, think about how uh, the first one can be a little bit stronger than the second one of these two. You never want the second one to be stronger. Next line starts with eight and nine, Shan 10, Shan 10. So think of the lower note and the upper note and playing just this is similar to broken octaves if you're playing 8, 13, 7, 12. But instead of just a single note on the bottom, I'm playing a shun. And with broken octaves, we lift it in between, so you'll be doing the same thing here. So play down lighter with the thumb and lifting with the thumb. So think of this down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Now we have a series of sha sha ten on five and six. Five is the lower string, ten is the upper string. So just kind of remember five and ten when you play this. Then at the end of the measure, it goes to six, seven, and eleven, sha ten. So think of it as sha sha ten, sha sha. This is six and seven, eleven is kind of your go to little um, piece there at the end of each measure, and that continues for the next four measures, or in that group of four measures. So five, six, ten, five, six, ten, five, six, ten, then six and seven, eleven. Again. Next line is four, five, and nine. So think of four and nine. Again, we go to the six, seven, eleven. Now we have just, think of, if this were broken octaves, it would be five, 10, three, eight, but the, the bottom is not a broken, it's not a shunt, it's not a single note, it's a shun. As you're playing this, you wanna get your left hand ready on 11 to get ready for the 11 press and So 
that you're ready to go into that. This is one octave above the opening section of the C section, so it's just the same thing. Bouncing down from that squee, then the 10-9 leads into the D section. Moving on to the Koto 2 part, again this starts like Koto 1 with a half press on the 6, make sure that you can you're used to that. And we're playing an awase zume, which is not an octave, and it's not a real close awase zume. There are two open notes, two open strings in between the six and the three that we're playing here. And so we're gonna be using our middle finger here. Make sure, listen and make sure that it rings together cleanly and clearly, and that the press sounds good. The six press sounds good with that three. Also, since the sixth press is a little bit low, your body might be moving this way a little bit. So it's okay to play out just a little bit from the dukaku, maybe a little bit further out than you would usually play, if that makes it easier for you to do the press. So this starts with one. Note I have my fourth finger on the, on the four string, and then one and two and three and four. Okay, so here we're thinking about connecting. We have the middle finger and then the second finger for the three, five. So concentrate on making that a smooth transition between the third finger and the second. And here we go with the five and the eight, same thing, middle finger and thumb. And here you might be able to move back closer to the ducock, four and one to tr smooth transition here, just like we had before. Then we have one and, when we have a descending pattern like this, or patterns of notes like this, I like to think of the first note as kind of ringing first. That's a little bit stronger. The remaining notes below that just kind of flow smoothly from that note. So one and two, three and four, one, two, three, four, one, and from five, smoothly flowing down, one, two, three, four, now, now we're doing, we're going back and forth. I want you to be careful here as you interchange between, do that changeover to the second finger, then to the thumb. You can see what I'm doing is I'm lifting that finger right before I make the change, I lift up. I'm not playing fully down into that next string. I'm lifting up and then I'm starting over now I'm lifting and bending here so that I can start cleanly. It starts one, two, lift. Next measure, one, two, three, lift, lift. Then we have the on three and five, ending with five, six. Always going to six at the end. One, six. Then we go back to this pattern. Lift, always as you change fingers, focus on lifting up. Get your six press ready for, to come right into that awase zume. And one and two and three and four and a one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four.
Moving on to the D section, we can see that it begins with a long string of eighth notes, continuing for quite a while for eight measures there. With coda one, it's important to be aware that there are two pickup notes preceding the D section that connect the end of the C section to the D section. So if we look at the last measure of the C section, we can see coda one playing then 10, 9, 10, okay? And then we go into the D section. So just be aware that this last final ju, ku, ju, this, the final 10, 9, the last beat of that measure, connect to the beginning of the D section. At the beginning of the D section, I'd like you also to think about uh, four notes in a group. So as you look at the music, group the first two beats and the second two beats of each measure into a group of four eighth notes. Think of it as fours. So for example, it starts out with 10, 11, 11, 11. That's one group. Then 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 13, 13, 13. Then think of the next 13, 11, 11, 11. So I'll play through this section and I'd like to just, just focus on this grouping of fours and also a slight, I think it's useful to have a slight accent at the beginning of each group. So 10, 11, 11, 11, 11, 12, 12, 12, playing with the pickup on the fourth beat. So it's three and four beginning here. 11, 12, 12, 12, 13. Focus on the first two notes of each group, 10, 9, 9, 11, 10, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 8, 7, 6, 5. I think there are two places midway through this section and there at the end where the pattern changes a little bit. So just be aware there. In measure 4, it goes 10, 8, then 8, 7, 7, 6, a slightly different pattern. And then at the end here, uh, in the measure right before this next change to the next pattern is 10, 11, 10, 8, 7, 6. So this 10, 8, 7, 6. Just think about that and be careful there. As we move into the next section, this is a similar, um, well, the same kind of technique that we looked at in the C section where you are playing down you might think that it's important to play down into every string, and it is, generally. In this case, the final five, four, three, two, you need to lift up and then come up with your second finger. And so five, four, three, lift here, then up here. Lift at the top. Lift here, lift here. And then we start that pattern over again. So what I'd like you to think about here is the lifting and also a sense of beat, of keeping the beat. So four of these 16th notes per beat. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and now we're in the squee section. Two, four, we have four measures of this, getting lighter. Three, with four, very soft here. Then going back to this same feeling of one, two, three, four. When you're doing the squeak, again, 
like we've spoken before, about before, we want to be playing strongly down on the downstroke and then lighter on the upstroke, allowing your wrist and your arm to come up with the squee as you scoop back with the finger. The next section just follows the exact same pattern from the beginning of the D section, so focusing on the slight accent and the groups of four. 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 11, 10, 9, 9, 11, 10, 8, 8, 7, 7, be careful, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, careful here, 10, 8, 7, 6, go, and 2, and 3. Okay, here we have upward and downward glissando. Please focus on the beginning, on the beat. So the beginning here, the beginning here, and then the end here. And these will be, be on beats one, two, three. Strong at the beginning, down here. Strong at the beginning of second beat. Lighter here in the middle. So one and two and three. And uh, one and two and three. Getting a little bit softer. One and two and three. And uh, one and two and three. Looking at the Koto two part, you can see that it, we need to count and careful, be, be careful to count two rests at the beginning of the D section. So you could listen to the Koto one part and watch that they're playing the Ju, to, 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 those four notes there. Think about that. You can also just count one and two, and then you come in three, four. Just as with the Koto one part, one, two, three, four, groups of four. One, two, three, four, eight, six. Careful here, six, seven, eight, nine. Slight accent at the beginning of each group of four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. Left, two, three, eight. Be careful, the different pattern there than Scooey here. Be careful, two, second measure there, gradually getting softer, three, moving the wrist a little bit, softer for the fourth measure, one and two and three, stronger at the top and the bottom, one and two and three. You may need to, if if, if you find yourself kind of playing a little bit quickly to get that kind of momentum and that full sound at the bottom and the top, you may find that you need to slow down a little bit in the middle here so that you reach the top or the bottom right in time with the beat and one and two and three. The last one a little bit softer, one and two and three. Now we go to the pattern here that we've talked about with Koto 1. Focusing on lifting when we interchange the fingers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Keep going. One, two, three, four. One, two, Three, lift, lift, lift again, lift, lift. And then we go to our broken octaves here, dropping down firmly with the middle finger, playing more lightly, having that thumb in position here. 
three, four, and two, two, three, four, soft for three, two, three, four, very soft, four, two, three, four. You'll notice that the E section starts out just as the very beginning of the piece does, and this is an exact repetition of the first six measures of the A section. Let's go through Koto 1, and starts with the Shan, very clear with the Shan right from the beginning, and... Uh, careful with the Koto Din, strong and then lighter. This down up movement here. This is where we make the jump, and what we're doing is we're jumping to the material that's at the end of the A section. Um, this is Awase Zume. We talked about this before, but make sure that you play, that you feel like you're playing kind of from the side like this and not up like this. So as you look down at your hand, make sure that you can kind of see a shape, this kind of backwards C shape, rounded like this. We've talked about it before, but it's really important, very, very useful technique, pinching together and lifting. So here we are. And then what Sawai Sensei does here is he goes to the material that we find at the end of the B section, which was this one, Remember this? I would like you to be very careful in, and think about this connecting section, this little piece here of the six, seven, three, then the eight. Really focus on that and think of that as kind of connecting these two pieces that are quite similar. So one, Be 
careful here because in the B section, instead of going at the end of this, we go to shan shan. But here, we're going to one, two, three. I'd like you to think of, of playing this a little bit more strongly, dropping down into the one, slight accent, one, two, three, four, and then just following up smoothly. These notes here, the following notes after that initial downbeat can be a little bit softer and maybe a little bit stronger on the beat. So one, two, three, four, five, one and five, then two, then six, and the two, then six. Looking at Kodo two, so it starts out again, exactly the same as the A section with the glissando and the tremolo. Tremolo, okay. Tremolo, you just need to keep working on that um, gradually. In the beginning, don't try to do it too fast. It doesn't have to be too fast and it doesn't have to be too loud. Gradually, you'll learn to make it more strong. And um, let's try the beginning here. And one and two, three and four and kodo ding, kodo ding, kodo ding, kodo ding. One, two, three, four and kodo ding. Ascending, make sure to lift here. So as you're doing this ascending pattern here, you need to think ahead and get your 11, your, your 12 press ready to go here. So press it ahead of time so you're ready for the Again, here we think of this in groups of four. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Listening for that clear release of the press. One, right, left, four, then one, two, three, four, and rest and Okay, we had this before too, this kind of pattern where you're switching from one finger to the other. So from the third finger to the second finger smoothly. Make sure you, do, you count the rest, so one and two and three and. This just goes straight up from seven, a little bit stronger on the down beat. The final F section opens with Colto one with a descending glissando. And it's really important to feel this, a strong um, beat, downbeat and offbeat with this. So feel the beat on the one and two and so that first ichi, that first one down there, you wanna feel very strong. One and two, so one and two and three and four and one. Feeling strong with the 13 up here, one and 
Again, as with our other glissandos, the, this part in the middle can be a little bit lighter, so you want to feel very strongly though. One and two and three and four. Then we go to lift, like we've had before. Feel the beat. One, lift, lift here. Just continue on to the five. At the end, we just continue on. Two and three and four and one, two and uh. So the final sararin, this is very, very common. And we, it's very common in a lot of the classical music. Um, beautiful um, kind of little set of little techniques all combined. So we've got, start with the tremolo. Um, you might with tremolo sometimes find it easiest to use your pinky to kind of anchor yourself. Here I've started by anchoring myself with my little finger there on the 11 string tremolo. So this is on, starts on the third beat. So you might think three and four and one. Okay, so what happens, it looks complicated, but let's break down the elements. We have the tremolo, then we have this bit where we're playing with the backs of the picks of our second and third fingers, kind of, kind of going, going along the strings. Just feel like you're moving along the strings. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, move your fingers like this as you move down a little bit, and then, Fairly quickly, switch over to your thumb here with the downward. Um, I think that if I had to say how far I went with this, I would say I go down, maybe about, down to about the nine, but then my thumb takes over here from the back. And we do want to hear very clearly at least the, this, Eight, seven, six there. Three and four and one, two, then the a hikido there and shun at the end. Hikido is holding onto the string between your thumb and your index finger, close to the bridge, and pulling towards the bridge in order to bend the pitch. Final shun at the end. Looking at the second koto part, the second koto part might remember we have from the end of the E section, we're playing da 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 da. It's a little bit tricky. Uh, the counting there, you just have, because we're kind of connecting those two sections and often you feel like this is, that first toll is, is a little bit confusing with what comes next. So just remember that it's four and one, two, ooh, three. So this ascending glissando is with two, ooh, three, rest and one, two and three, rest then quickly. Okay, so, uh, Counting those rests, da, 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 one, two, ooh, three, rest and rest, two, ooh, three. Then it's a very quick up and down, up, down, down, and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and. Just as we do with all of these glissandos up to this point, Stress the bottom, stress the, stress the beginning when you change. So coming up, stress here, coming down, stress here, and then you're also gonna be stressing the final one there. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. To tr start with a tremolo, three and four and one, two and pull.
release, and shun. Timing for the sararin, three and four and one. So think of this on the last offbeat of that measure. So three and four and one, two and three, four and one. Thank you for watching. We hope that these videos have been helpful to you in reinforcing your skills and understanding and that you revisit them from time to time.